Hi, and welcome to Puppetize Live. I'm James Pogren, a senior software engineer here at Puppet. In this session, I'm going to cover installing the Puppet extension for Visual Studio Code and the Puppet development kit, then configuring them to get a quick development environment without a lot of hassle. Here before us, I have a fresh Windows 10 install. In order to get our development environment up and running, we need three things, the PDK, Visual Studio Code, and the Puppet extension for VS Code. I can get the PDK and Visual Studio Code from their download site or from your favorite package manager like Chocolate or AppGet. Over here, I would download the Windows version, and over here, I would pick the default. But I've already downloaded them, so I don't need to do that. But watching the PDK and VS Code install is kind of slow, so let's speed up things a little bit. While they're installing, let's talk about Puppet development for a moment. Getting started writing Puppet code can be daunting whether you're new to Puppet or an old hat. There's lots to install and configure, and each time you set up a new workstation or go update your current setup, you have to go through the same chicken dance. I need a Ruby install and Puppet, but what versions do I get? Where did I download them again? Oh yeah, I bookmarked it, but they moved it. Great. Now it's over here. And installing them is never easy, no matter which OS you use. And believe me, I develop on Windows by choice. Once they're all installed, how do I configure them all to work together? Oh yeah, it's a dot file that you have to create in this repo, but it's been a while since I created a module from scratch. I don't remember where all this goes. I guess I'll copy paste from this popular module in the forge, but it does differently than this other module in the forge. Well, uh, now what do I do? Well, the PDK solves all of this by bundling everything you need to get, to get, to get started in one installer, no matter the OS you use. It then provides a CLI that will bootstrap your modules and set up and configure your test suites so that everything will work out of the box. I think we've watched enough install. Now that they're both installed, I've skipped everything that I was just complaining about. I didn't have to do anything else to get an environment set up for me. The PDK took care of all that work. However, the PDK handles in the environment, but it doesn't handle the actual coding experience. Syntax highlighting and advanced editor features are the norm nowadays. In order to get that, I'll install the Puppet VS Code extension. First, let's up open VS Code and maximize it. We'll open the extension part by hitting Control B. Or clicking since we can't get our keyboard right. And then we'll type in Puppet. Puppet appears first. We see by the branding that this is the official Puppet extension. To install it is easy, we just click install. If we needed an offline install, we could download the VSIX from the Marketplace Gallery and install from VSIX command line or from the menu here. Now that the extension is installed, we hit reload to activate it in the current window. Now that we're in an empty window, how do we use this thing? Well, in general, extensions in VS Code are activated when predefined events happen. In the case of a Puppet extension, it's activated when we open any Puppet manifest file. Let's activate the extension by creating an empty Puppet manifest file. We'll save this untitled file as foo.pp and replace what's already there. Notice Puppet starts immediately and uh, attempts to load and then we get a nice progress screen. Now why is this loading here? Well, let's look at our configuration settings. There's a lot of settings in VS Code. We can avoid having to search through all of them by going to the search bar and typing Puppet. Now we can see only the Puppet inf settings information in front of us. I'll cover most of these settings right here, but for right now, the most important setting is the install type. Now, the extension was able to tell what install we had by this. Currently, in the released extension in the gallery, the agent is default. In the future, it'll be PDK. We currently have Puppet loaded now, so now we can start typing just like we did in our whistle stop tour and get our syntax completion, hover, and doc support. Back to our settings. 
we can upgrade update the log level by setting the verbose debug normal warning or error value here we can change the protocol from standard i out to tcp look for a future vs puppetize live vs code session to explain how this will be useful the address is for the protocol if we are using TCP. And the debug file path is useful if we were going to try to debug a crash or anything that would not happen correctly inside the editor. This is where you would set the location to a file to send back to us here to debug. Port and uh, timeout have to do with the language server. Port is if we have the TCP portion of the setting configured, and timeout is if we want to increase the timeout for the connections to the language server. The last important setting here is the Puppet Agent dir. This is the directory for the install that we currently have for Puppet Agent or PDK. This is if it's installed in a non-default location. So now with the extension fully loaded and our settings configured, we're ready to go. I hope you found this helpful in getting started with the Puppet Visual Studio Code extension and the PDK. In future sessions, I'll go more into detail about using the extension to write Puppet code with the PDK and the Puppet Visual Studio Code extension. You can find more information at these links and the links for the Marketplace Gallery installation.